Chris, I want to ask about your buddy, Max Scherzer. What were your thoughts on that situation? I know, you know, when you were with the Mets with him, you guys were tight and you learned a lot from him. So when you watched the suspension, now he came back yesterday and he's obviously pissed. He's, he doesn't agree with the decision. I know you've talked about MLB and, their, and we've got all players on the show every day and their disaster of how they've handled um, a baseball and sticky mm-hmm. stuff. And then Max comes back yesterday. And he's like, yeah, obviously I'm rusty. I haven't pitched in two weeks and the season just started. Yeah, um, really tough. Um, just because I, I, I know I know Max's routine. I know Max's um, what he does every single day, and I I know without a shadow of a doubt that he was not cheating at all. Um, and, and and to me, the craziest part is like why kind of like why would he cheat all of a sudden right now? It doesn't even make sense. Um, we all know guys that still do some some stuff that is probably crossing the line, um, but Max is sure as heck not one of them. So to call out a Hall of Famer, um, like I said, in, in a in a division where the division is probably going to come down to one or two games, is is it, it was it was not a good look. It's not it's not good for the game. It's not good for anyone involved. Did you talk to him? Yeah, I've talked to him. I mean, I won't talk to. I won't say what I've what we talked about, but I've definitely talked to him. I still talk to him a lot. How do we stop it? How do we stop pitchers like Max or yourself? Let's say and I, this, we called out Phil Cuzzy left no. and right because he's the only one that's got a guy yet. Your next start, you have Phil Cuzzy out there. You use rosin and sweat, and you go to him, and you say you, get, you hand him the ball, you hand him your hand, and he goes, too sticky. You're out. How do we stop it? I don't, I don't know anymore. I, I really don't know anymore. Um, like I said, I, I know what Max uses. I know what Ma- when I say I know what Max uses, I know what he doesn't use. He doesn't use anything illegal. So um, for him to kind of get popped for not using anything illegal, I don't know. I don't know who's safe. I, I don't use anything, so I'm not too concerned about it. Um, I, I don't even touch the rosin bag. You use nothing. You, you use nothing. I don't use a single thing because I feel like it takes away from my sinker. I don't, I don't, I don't like, I like the ball kind of like to roll off my fingers um, for my sinker. Um, sure, it would probably help like all the other pitches, but for the most part, I want to live and die by my sinker. So it's, it's tough for me to kind of hurt my best pitch to improve all the other ones kind of thing for having, say, a little tack with the, with the rosin. But um no, I, I don't like the way this whole thing was 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 basically done. I, I really enjoy the game of hockey, but at the same time, um, I became more of a fan of players rather than just. And it's not even like I was like rooting for a specific guy. I just like like you go and see like Sydney, or you go and see like Ovechkin or whoever it may be, um, and you're like, dang, like you're seeing like the world's best players, and that that was the coolest part to me. So. I didn't really have a favorite team, so to speak. So I, I was like, all right, I'll jump on the bandwagon of the lead. <laughs> well, what, what, no, because what? so you were a Blackhawks fan. We moved to the White Sox, and then you were. But Sharks he's a fan, fan of players. I know, but it seems like yeah, now he's a now he's a. I get it. He's a Leafs fan. They won their first. Yeah. They won their first series in what, like twenty five years? Yeah, they're freaking out up there, aren't yeah, they? Of course they are. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So have you met? Have you met the Leafs players? Do you know? Do the Leafs players come take? No, you but I, how can you haven't grown out your beard? <laughs> yeah, like Jordan Romano, he's a, a massive, a massive Leafs fan. So he he knows like the like, like the genuinely like, true history of like we've struggled for this long. We haven't won a series for like in this long. So like he's given me like the, a history lesson of like this is why we need to root for them. This is why it's so important. This is why everyone's losing their mind. So yeah, um, to see the city like this excited, it, it's really it's really cool. I, I like it. Hey, Chris, I wanted to ask you about the owners. And you're not too fond of them. And now, you know, <laughs> of, uh, <laughs> one of, you know, one of the you know, great franchises is leaving, Oakland. They're, they're, you know, the fans have been, yeah, there's your, there's your tweet. Uh, the fans have been, just been, you know, shat on in a way. You know, the, the basketball team went on the other side of the water. Football team went to Vegas. Baseball team is threatening to leave with purchase of land in Vegas. Explain that, man. As a person, you spent a lot of your time in your career there, a, a pride franchise, a proud franchise. Every time they get anybody that they, that they got to pay, they ship out. 
And it's it's as a baseball fan, it sucks because you want everybody to compete. They don't look like they're competing. And it's not and I'm and no disrespect to the guys that strap it on for them every day because those guys have an opportunity to go and play and they grinding. But as an overall organizational philosophy, they're not trying to win. Yeah, um, it's it's really tough. Um, <clears throat> I mean, you go back and look at the old Oakland team um, that we are part of. And I mean, I still talk to so many guys. I mean, we're, we're still in a massive group chat and stuff like that. And we still talk pretty frequently. And it, it, was, it was more so like, man, if we could just add a piece or two to this roster with Simeon and, and Olsen and Chapman and all the and all those guys. And I'm like, if we just add one or two pieces with Bo Mel, um, we got a chance to do something special here. <clears throat> and <clears throat> instead of kind of adding a piece or two, we decided to blow it up. So that that's always been a touchy subject, I think, with all of us. But it's just more so like I mean, we, we know how much the, how much money is made in this game. We, we, we just know it. And um, with revenue sharing and all that, I just think it's ridiculous to have a team that's just not trying to win when you know how much money is being brought in. Um, so that, that was the biggest thing is like you look at San Diego and you look at obviously like Toronto, the team that I'm on, the Mets. And I understand like San Diego, the Mets and all that might be extreme examples of like spending money. I'm not saying you got to go spend up $400 million, but I, I mean, you got to put a product on the field where it's like, all right, like we're investing in players that are really, really good to try to win a world series. So I, I just think if you're, if you're not in the game to try to win a world series, then I don't think you should be an owner. I really don't. And that tweet also that we showed actually came before all, all the Oakland stuff from, from this year. So when, when you put that out there, were you more referring to, for example, a team like obviously yours is is spending in in a winning <clears> window right now, but then also in San Diego? I mean, we give a ton of credit because owners are faces of the sport as well to a Padres owner that's like, screw this, we're the only team in town. We're gonna get players, we're gonna have fun, and we're gonna try and have winning baseball here because we're all freaking rich. <laughs> right. That, that that's a hundred percent it. I mean, it's just like. You have San Diego, or I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to mention teams, but like the, all the, all the, all the best teams. You, you see the excitement and like the, the ripple effect of like, all right, we spend this much money, and all the businesses get like obviously a big boost from it. You have the fan bases that are excited. <clears throat> so it's like, I, I, I just don't understand going the cheap route and losing a hundred games. It just doesn't make sense to me. And in, in, in this grand scheme of thing of just. Basically, all these owners, the, the the owning of a baseball team is not even like their main source of like money. They're 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 billionaires for a whole another reason. So, to to penny pinch and just sit there and just collect revenue sharing is 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 just crazy to me. And also that outfield defense. Yeah, awesome. Um, Toronto as a city is obviously unbelievable. Um, everyone knows that, um, but the team is just. Young, uh, really, really good. Obviously, um, hungry, to, hungry to win. And then, yeah, playing behind, I mean, playing for like this team with basically three center fielders running around. Um, it makes it makes pitching pretty easy. I would guess. I would say so. You got the outfield defense, and then you got the sluggers, right? You got yeah. Vlad. You got Bobuchet. You got Springer. They score for you guys every night too. I pick Vlad as my MVP. Tell me why I'm right. <laughs> He can do everything. I mean, I mean, literally, literally every, everything. I mean, a lot of people will, yes, definitely lump them into like the so-called like are their sluggers kind of thing, but they're batting three hundred and they're they're in in contention to win a Gold Glove. So, um, yeah, I mean, there's there's not a single thing that Vladdy can't do. So yeah, he should be. I mean, he should be an MVP candidate every single year. <laughs> 